Good afternoon, traders and investors. It's Will here with another one. Hope you guys had a great weekend today. Another green day on the markets here for Monday, 12th of June. It has now been several weeks in a row that we've been up in the markets, respectively on SPY and QQQ. So we're going to take a look at the charts here. And big day tomorrow, guys, with our CPI data, right? This is going to be huge for the Federal Reserve. Federal Reserve is expected to pause on Wednesday's meeting. However, if the inflation comes in hotter than expected or doesn't come down as much as expected, could the Federal Reserve potentially continue increasing our rates here? So all of that and more to check in. But first, let's get into some charts. Now, just want to go over the heat map for today. So another beautiful, beautiful day in terms of market breadth. Now, the concern about three, at this point, about three weeks ago, three, four, and five weeks ago was this entire market was being upheld by our major tech names, Microsoft, Apple, NVIDIA, Google, Meta, and Amazon. And for the most part, we did not have broad market participation. However, that has now shifted in the past two weeks in a significant fashion. As you guys can see, we did get more of a broad-based rally today with the sectors being red, our major, our major secondary sectors being healthcare and financials. You guys can see payment processors were good. The banks were only slightly down and some of our healthcare names were also slightly down. So no real big red. Worst performing sector on the day was energy, so that has now translated into a very, very bullish looking spy chart, in my opinion, to start the week off. Now, obviously, tomorrow going to be a very, very volatile day, especially if we get some worse than expected numbers on the CPI. Now, into the charts themselves, what are we looking at, guys, since last week? We were kind of looking at our daily uptrend continuation. So with Friday's close, we kind of con we kind of confirmed that we were now in a confirmed daily uptrend pattern ever since breaking out of this range, right? We've been very consistent in now putting higher highs, right? And higher lows compared to our previous levels, right? So it's been a very, very healthy chart in my opinion, especially when you're getting more participation from the rest of the market measured by RSP. Don't forget guys, RSP, very, very important index for you guys to follow. It really measures the S&P on, on an equal weighted basis if every, every stock weight was maintained the same. So you don't necessarily get that big outperformance from your big tech names. So this also very, very bullish. So SPY on the daily here, if we go back to the daily, let me throw on the moving averages here. As you can see, we are slightly extended from the 12 EMA. The next target on SPY, you have to go all the way out to the weekly to actually see it. We have now crushed my 43, 432, 433 target that we were looking at. The next area, guys, for the S&P 500 with decent amount of resistance at this point is going to be all the way up here at 4 in the 452, 453 range. That is going to be the next big area of resistance as here was kind of just a waterfall drop with not much support being set in the way when we were dropping last year very bullish right the bulls are in full 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 control of this weekly chart as you can see beautiful beautiful uptrend if we do somehow pull back tomorrow and wednesday with whatever said with cpi and the fed well we're just looking for a weekly higher low so keep your eye on what happens with the daily tomorrow whether we do push higher or whether we start pushing higher and then reverse everything that would kind of indicate that we may be going into some potentially needed weekly consolidation at this point guys because we are getting kind of you know kind of lofty in terms of the run here especially on the queues so the one ma main condition for me guys if you want to hold this up is well what's going to happen if qqq pulls back we absolutely need to see xlf and xlv kind of hold up right really need to see that we'll get into that right now QQQs, QQQs, very, very bullish day. Once again, really continuing this daily uptrend in motion now with the higher highs being set at this point. And if we want to find the resistance, we're looking on the weekly. We are almost there. It's this range here, supply zone, anywhere between 363 all the way up to 370. So we're almost there. This is pretty much the last line of defense. And then we're looking up at all-time highs. Just to give you guys an idea on percentage, right? Before this major next leg started up here, the beginning of May, the QQQs were still down 21% from all-time highs. As it stands now, guys, we are only currently down 11, what was that? 11 11.5% from all-time highs. So we're really doing some good work pushing the levels upwards. We are kind of extended away from this 12 EMA here. Not too sure why I don't have my, um, let me throw back on my 
Oop. Let me throw back all my moving averages here. Not too sure why they're not showing up. Let me try something here. Um, that's kind of weird. Let me just try to refresh my page, guys. Sorry about this. I'm going to try to look at the, uh, the moving averages because I really want to see where the RSI and the moving average are set. There we go. Just need a quick page refresh here. Okay. So, as you can see, guys, the R still overbought here on the RSI. The MACD is still very, very bullish in terms of that. But we are starting to get slightly, slightly overbought here on these levels, right? Now, it's been like that for a while. What you can see now, what I wanted to point out to you guys, is we're running into a bit of divergence. This is what will be known as negative or bearish divergence, right? You have your market pushing for higher highs, but the RSI is not keeping up. So this could lead to a pullback. Obviously, it's just one technical indicator, but if a pullback were to happen, guys, line in the sand level for me, 348.75-ish, up to $348 here on the QQQs, and at that point, if we do pull back and lose that level, we are just looking for a weekly higher low. Tons of space, guys. The level for me at this point is just going to be 310 right so tons and tons and tons of space lots of nice support here with the moving averages we do have our previous uh, horizontal support that could come in here and help as well so tons and tons of space for bulls to set that but just reminding you the bulls are in absolute complete control of these major time frames xlf doing a very very good job of holding the level okay so what we wanted to see is the daily uptrend daily uptrend for me now at this point is set looking up higher here needs to crack 33.50 for our weekly uptrend to be set into motion. That is what I'm looking out for on XLF if we want to see further consolidation. If QQQ does decide to take a breather, I need to see XLF smash into this level and really start taking over, right? Taking some of the pressure off of tech, starting to lead. At this point, we haven't had banking crisis headlines in quite a long time. I would say a good three, four weeks at this point. So it should be now a non-issue. I hope you guys also feel the same because I've been saying that ever since it started. So potentially some great, great opportunities. I'll bring this one up every single time. Charles Schwab, in my opinion, one of the better opportunities, one of the more undervalued opportunities currently. If you look at the other major banks, right? JP Morgan also doing a fairly decent job, still relatively about 18% off time off all time highs. This is a bit, a bit of an ugly inverse head and shoulders. If it cracks through, would not surprise me if this pops through as well. This kind of looks like the Dow Jones chart, as a matter of fact, on the weekly, right? You can see nice little inverse head and shoulders, and they should be following themselves pretty adequately. So I need this to break. And at this point, if you're looking on the daily chart, right, we just need to break this level. At this point, bulls are in full control. Level to watch out for me on the downside would be around 3240. You don't want to lose this level or you risk the or you run the risk of trying to fill this gap to the lower end and we just get stuck back in this big range, right? So very good job by the bulls. XLV. XLV coming up, guys, coming up. Have we reversed the daily trend? We will know if we break 131.34. That's what I need to see the bulls do. They've done a great job at recovering here. We've got a lot of, lot of, lot of bullish things to look out for here on the weekly. It would be potentially the start of a weekly uptrend if we can get through these moving averages here and work our way up to the higher levels here. The weekly uptrend will be a potential. We're still not that far off all-time high, guys. Don't forget, it's only around 8% at this point. So really, bulls have done a great job of kind of taking over. We have broad market support from the rest of our sectors. So looking out for this one, heavily looking out for this one, guys. Need this daily uptrend to confirm, and it needs to confirm by going above here. At this point, you don't want to see bulls lose the 129-ish level, right? or that would kind of consolidate a unfortunate trend reversal into a new daily downtrend. IWM Russell, IWM Russell holding a good job, holding its own. What is it doing now? In my opinion, this is just a daily bear, uh, daily bull flag, excuse me. So our daily uptrend is set. At this point, I do believe this is just a bull flag. So meaning very, very small consolidation before a potential pop up. If it does pop up, we're targeting the supply area right here, anywhere between 189 to 191. That's going to be my target area for the next leg up. That would really coincide with the top end of this kind of really really ugly range right that we've been in now for the past eight nine months at this point um almost actually a year right so very very good job by the bulls at this point they have broken out and set the weekly uptrend right so this chart i'll bring it up again this chart looks like xlf before it breaks out 
right? So IWM has already completed that breakup and we're going to look for further upside continuation at this point. Anything above 172.50 ish is just going to be a weekly higher low should we consolidate. Tons of horizontal support and the moving averages down here. So I'm not nervous at all for the bulls. They've done a great job. But in my opinion, this will be just a bull flag. We're going to look to break the 187.70 ish. Let's call it 188 almost to break above higher and really go tag into these guys, the 180, the 190 into the 190, you know, 191 and a half level, these guys right here, right? So great job by the bulls on that. Uh, Dow Jones, Dow Jones doing exactly what we wanted it to, guys. I pointed out this head and shoulders formation since we were consolidating down in this area. This does appear now at this point to be just a weekly bull flag. That's what it's trying to do. If we do crack our neckline here, we will be due to move higher. At that point, I'll be targeting areas. So this, These guys really up here at the top end of this range, 35,700-ish. And then the all-time highs. I do think that we might get some good pattern follow through on this since most of our value names now are recovering. We are in a confirmed daily uptrend at this point. It doesn't look like it wants to slow down yet. It really looks like it wants to plow into the top end of this resistance range up here. So really looking forward on our value names to come back. As you can see on a lot of names, we have kind of started to bottom out a lot of our value names that have been taken down. This is Coca-Cola. This is Pepsi, right? So we're kind of smoothing out the drop, right? Not dropping as hard as we were a few weeks ago. If you look at other stocks like John Deere, already recovered slightly. Um, Caterpillar, just going to go through the uh, the Dow Jones names here. Um, JP Morgan as well, right? JP Morgan doing a great job. If you want to look at the payment processors, Visa and MasterCard, right? We're no longer, we're no longer really dropping, dropping. Um, they've kind of leveled out and we're kind of coming back up. Stocks like McDonald's as well, they've kind of issued their pullback, their kind of weekly pullback off of all time highs into previous support, um, you know, so previous support range, which is what you were looking out for, right? So now the value names, could it be the time for our value names to start to come back and start to play? right? Could this be their time after having dropped off now for four or five weeks in a row? We've now had about a week and a half of very good recovery on a lot of Dow Jones names. So it would not surprise me if we do get that upswing into higher levels. One thing to pay attention to guys on the VIX, I want to point this out. We had a nice green day, but the VIX was up. In my opinion, that's just because we do have two important days tomorrow. Sometimes when you have the VIX going up and the market going up, it could be a sign for a reversal. In this case, I can't really say that that's the case. I believe that it's only due to having large events both tomorrow and Wednesday. So we'll keep an eye on that. Obviously, this level when the VIX does get so low is kind of when most people start looking to take profit on stocks that have run a lot. So just keep that in mind. Uh, crypto got absolutely destroyed over the weekend. There is a, a preliminary hearing tomorrow after the SEC sued both Binance and um Coinbase for now probably the third or fourth time respectively each. So it's nothing new that the SEC has kind of been probing them and deposing them with several lawsuits over the past year. Kind of unfortunate for the crypto space, but in my opinion, regulation for the space is good. So we had a lot of altcoins here fall off a cliff over the weekend if you're into crypto. I personally don't really invest in any altcoins. I'm more of a Bitcoin and Ethereum maxi. So those weren't hit too hard, but what we are looking out guys, we still need to break out out of this channel, right? So we need to absolutely hold these lows and reset the pattern, right? Unfortunately, this engulfing bullish pattern was completely given back by the bulls. Very, very unfortunate. So now we have to restart, try to reset the daily higher lows. And until then, the bears will remain in full control of this downtrending pattern. Really need no need to get into the other cryptos because Bitcoin dominance has been absolutely off the charts. Guys, as you can see, Bitcoin is really the dominant name and has been the dominant name all year to date, right? So until Bitcoin it can actually catapult us into a new uptrend. The daily trend is my guide. I don't really look at the lower time frames on Bitcoin, especially not when it's been doing absolutely nothing. So what we need to see on Bitcoin, we need to see a break above at this point, 26,005. We need to break above it, then retest it, and then break above, hopefully get out of this channel to the upside if you want to be bullish on Bitcoin for something like the weekly trend continuation at that point. Now let's get into some stocks. Apple. 
Apple, once again, pushing the boundaries of all time highs. The daily retracements have been complete as of last week. So now we're really targeting 185 pretty much as our next resistance, which is this guy right up here. Bullish, con I mean, look at this chart, guys. Just bulls are in absolute complete control. No signs of, of bulls wanting to roll over yet at this point. We are slightly overbought on the RSI, but that doesn't really matter in my opinion. It's not egregiously overbought. On the weekly, I don't know how many weekly uh, how many weekly green uh, candles we've had in a row now. I mean, even last week, we didn't even breach the week prior's low, right? So you can argue that this week wasn't actually bad. We made a new high and we didn't break the low of the previous week here. So even that was, even that, although it was a red candle, was a fairly bullish week. We've now been pretty much up since March on Apple, right? And why? Because it is known as one of the safe haven stocks. Even in a recession, Apple tends to do really, really well. So can't really blame investors for kind of pouring a lot of money into there. The support zone remains my red box here, anywhere between 176 and 168 on the day on the on the daily and weekly at this point. On the daily, anything above 170, this these guys right here, right? Any 178, let's call it, will just be a daily higher low, provided that we break this. I do think the daily uptrend will continue unless we get some really bad news from the FOMC but bulls are in full control congratulations guys really 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 good plays if you bought apple stock down in the 130s 140s you must be very happy right now amazon amazon doing a great job it's now coming off right so now people are kind of probably feeling fomo oh no i wasn't able i didn't buy down here do i need to catch up well let's have a look the bulls are in absolute complete control on the daily. Most important time frame, in my opinion, holding this 12 EMA the whole time, right? The RSI is not that overbought here, okay? Not that overbought compared to other names. What are we looking at to the upside? Our next levels of resistance, in my opinion, are going to be 131 to the 136 range. So all the way up here, guys, is what we're looking at on the weekly. That coincides with these candles right here. We're now above our moving averages in a significant fashion on the weekly anything on the weekly look how much space we have now guys anything above 102 is just going to be a weekly higher low so very 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 bullish on amazon if you're waiting for a pullback i understand however if you want to see the weekly pullback the bulls are going to have to lose this 12 ema if we don't lose the 12 ema the pullback is not necessarily coming okay so just be wary of that be careful of it Potentially, if the news doesn't go well tomorrow and Wednesday, if the market doesn't react to it well, you may get your pullback. If I'm looking for a pullback, I'm looking to buy Amazon stock anywhere in the 115 all the way down to 110 range. I will be writing some options on it gladly. I do want to add to the Amazon position. I feel that it's one that hasn't run as much as its tech peers, still down 33% from the all-time highs. So very, very, very good. Just keep in mind, you will not get Amazon to drop if we cannot reset the daily trend to the downside right if we can't do something like this then we're not going to go for weekly consolidation bulls are just going to remain in complete control google same thing as google right google as i was saying guys this area if in the previous videos if you look this area right has been a very very strong area previous resistance is now acting as support it's technical perfection in my opinion very very solid area whenever google pulls down into this area as i was saying i'm writing options in the 115 all the way down to the gap full here 112 wouldn't mind picking up some google shares especially if they're down there in my opinion google does still represent some decent value they're growing really really well still down 18 percent from all-time highs obviously it's not as cheap as these prices down here but we can't go back in time and buy them right you either set limit orders down there you wait for price to come to you but if you do like google and you do believe that the market as i do will just continue to grind higher most likely for the next year um, and the next years to come because the bottoms are in then it may be worth pick, picking up here on this weekly pullback in my opinion this is just a weekly bull flag for google i do expect us to go uh, target the higher levels if we were to crack 130 at this point the next targets are going to be all the way in the 140s right so just be very uh, mindful of that i am i don't mind adding google in this it's obviously not the best level that we've had in the past but in terms of valuation i do think google still does have a very decent valuation right now for the growth that they will be having uh for their ai for their buzzword ai implementation over the next three four years as well so i am a buyer of google if it does dip below 120 i will start um going a bit more heavy on the written put positions and if i'm assigned perfect i will hold the shares and keep them in my long-term position so very very good job by google microsoft 
Microsoft team bull back at it again, right? So Microsoft was one that did lose the daily higher lows, right? So the level to hold here was 325.40. We broke below it last week, but as you can see, the bulls have just recaptured it back saying, I don't care pretty much. Now, could it be a case of we set a lower high and then roll over to lower lows? Very possible. I don't take it off the table, especially if tomorrow CPI and the Fed decision is received bearishly by the market. In that case, guys, we will be looking out to the weekly, okay? On the weekly, it's still currently a weekly bull flag. In my opinion, okay, anything still above 306 is just going to be a weekly higher low. I consider this to be weekly consolidation. Obviously, this week isn't finished. We could pull a bit lower. So, in my mind, anything above 306, 307 is just a weekly higher low. It represents a decent buy opportunity. We have the moving average support. We have our previous horizontal support level, right, that we still... Um, can use. So that would be a good opportunity for me to be writing some options in Microsoft. If we do start pulling back, I'll be writing options on Microsoft roughly in the 305 all the way down to the 300 level, which would put us in this zone right here. Do think it's a great buying opportunity, but this stock is pretty much, you know, it's they've started guys, their monthly trend reversal, right? So any pullback, in my opinion, is just going to be buying as an opportunity for the next three, four, five years. So very, very good position to be adding long term. Microsoft bulls are in full control, full control of the weekly, right? The best you can ask for right now is a weekly pullback. But as long as the bulls just they as long as they cannot hold, as long as the bears can't, you know, pressure the bulls into losing the daily uptrend. We haven't lost the daily uptrend, guys, in so long. Even down here, this was not the loss of a daily uptrend. We never set the lower high compared to the previous high. We just rocketed back up from earnings, and you can say that's earnings fault, but I mean, it could have gone it could have gone either way, right? They could have just brought it back all the way up here for earnings and then rolled over, but they didn't. They didn't, so the bulls are in full control of this. Also more of a safe haven play. Wall Street absolutely loves this stock. Retail loves this stock. I mean, it is kind of lofty in terms of price right now, but it's Microsoft. I mean, they're an octopus. They have hands in every single part of the business ecosystem, whether it's business to client, business to business. Their margins are absolutely insane, right? So it's, you know, it's very, very, very tough to bet against this company, in my opinion. So congratulations to the bulls. Meta, uh, Meta doing a decent job here, kind of like Microsoft, of doing some damage control here, coming in, protecting the 12 EMA after that nice little drop we had last week. Coming back up, there's always a possibility that we could, you know, fade and, and break and set a daily downtrend lower, should the data tomorrow and Wednesday, I repeat, be bad. However, at this point, it is still a weekly bull flag. Until we crack this top here, it is still a weekly bull flag, whether it consolidates at the top or moves a bit lower. In my opinion, the weekly is very important on this. Anything above 231, it's just going to be a weekly higher low. I think we will just set a weekly higher low and continue pushing. The RSI is a bit elevated still, which is why if we have bad news tomorrow and Wednesday, it'll cool off a lot of the weekly RSIs in my opinion, but a lot of the moves will just be for a weekly higher low. I must sound like a broken record, but what do you want me to say, guys? I mean, the bulls are in full control. They just continue to set higher low after higher low after higher low, and there's nothing that the bears have been able to do so far. So until the bears do something and prove it to us on the contrary, my target for meta will still be in the $300 range for the gap fill and more grinding upside continuation here, okay? NVIDIA, NVIDIA also looking fairly good, right? So what NVIDIA was able to do is they were really able to hold the lows after earnings, right? So I know the old, the, I know the ultimate low to hold here is like 367, 368. However, we're doing a good job of just consolidating in a relatively, you know, it's a wide range in terms of dollars, right? But they're getting kind of tight on it, right? They're really keeping things together. You can see it better on the four hour time frame. They're just tightening up here. And what did we do? The bulls are actually resetting the four hour trend to the upside. So they had lost that four hour trend, right? They lost it. And now what are they doing? Engulfing, resetting it to the upside. If we do break 397.12 again, it will be a four hour reset of the trend to the upside. And it could lead the bulls to start pushing back up into our haul time high levels. All time high levels. The 12 EMA is holding strong at this point. On the weekly, have they set the weekly bull flag with only two weeks of consolidation and going up for a further move? It's 
always possible, guys. It's always possible. I know eventually they're going to have to cool off, but until we get some negative catalysts back to back, or until we're proven that maybe tomorrow and Wednesday is like a sell the news event, I don't think there's a major catalyst to trigger some, some deep consolidation on a lot of these stocks. The best that we can potentially get for the bulls in this case to cool off the weekly RSI is if we just continue to consolidate sideways for a considerable while, this RSI is just going to drop off slowly, right? As long as we don't get massive, massive moves, well, on a relative basis, the strength will diminish. And that's kind of what you want to see. But look, guys, I mean, this thing can stay overbought for quite some time. As you guys can see, it stayed overbought for a while back there. It stayed overbought here while pushing higher from July 2020, right, all the way through October, Right. So three months at these higher levels. Right. So, you know, NVIDIA is just one where it's very, very tough to bet against guys if they're not losing the daily trends and the bears can't do it in a convincing fashion. They did it. The bears had it right. We had here the lower high compared to the previous high. They made a lower low compared to this. But what happened? No follow through. No follow through whatsoever. They had it in the in their grasp. And they fumbled the bag, guys. The bears fumbled the bag on NVIDIA. What can they do, right? I assume they tried, but it just was not good enough. So until you see a reversal pattern, clear reversal pattern, you cannot say that we're expecting further weekly consolidation. It's just not going to happen. Now, doing a couple more. Palantir. Palantir still giving signs that it does want to kind of top out here on the weekly, at least in terms of candle formation. You know, this is a big, big, big move. We are overbought on the weekly RSI, but I just showed you NVIDIA, right? Now, on the daily, on the daily is what kind of uh, jumps out to me, right? That day last week where top to bottom we came down 15% is going to be the candle to beat, right? So we still have not lost the 12 EMA. However, what might happen here is you had such an aggressive move up that when you come down, you, the most likely scenario is going to be a lower high compared to this high here. So if that does happen and we do roll over the line in the sand level for me, guys, 1440. The bulls need to hold 1440 if you want the most likely scenario on Palantir to be something like this, a tightening range. That is the best case scenario for the bulls. Well, I mean, aside from V-shaped continuation, right? But if this does look like consolidation to you, it's normal. That's usually how this pattern plays out. Now, if it does play out that way, the best we can expect is consolidation in the 15 levels here. However, if we lose 1440, it's very possible that we do set somewhat of a daily downtrend and on the weekly, that will allow us to come down here and get some accumulation at the lower levels, allow some time for the moving average to catch up potentially. And I mean, so much space, guys. This will always be a weekly uptrend. Unless we do this, which would be absolutely insane. That's, that's like a 0.0001% situation in my head. But at this point, any consolidation here, anything is going to be a higher low. I'm looking to build a bigger Palantir position. Well, I have a lot of long-term shares, but in terms of written puts, because you guys know I love to write the puts, I'm looking for weekly consolidation. If I can get weekly consolidation below 14, I'll be writing puts here in the $13 range, potentially 12 and a half if I can get it that low. And, you know, that's just the way I'm looking to, uh, to play Palantir. It's very, very tough for me to buy way up here on Palantir personally. Tesla. Tesla doing a great job, doing a great job, guys, right? So we kind of had like a shooting star candle here where we had a gap up open on Friday into some profit taking most of the day. But the bulls today just showed up and brought it right back to the high of the new price range that we're having here, you know, between 252 and pretty much 242, right? So this little $10 range between both candles, very, very bullish, bullish price action for Tesla. There is a slight gap to be filled here. So if we do get, once again, bad news tomorrow or Wednesday or whatnot, and tech does decide to pull back a little bit. I will be looking for a gap fill here, you know, down to 235. It does come down to 235. I will be writing options in the 220 area. Low 220s, I will be writing options. I think that's our closest support level um, for me personally, right? If we look at this, it's a bit messy with the gaps, but in my opinion, this is kind of one bullish push here because we really haven't lost the lows on each push. So 
Anything above 214, 213, it's just going to be a daily higher low. On the weekly, so much space, right? So much space. Anything above 153 is just going to be your weekly higher low, right? Because we have a higher low every week, right? So as long as that's the case, this was our actual low, 152.79, 153. Anything above is going to be just a weekly higher low. I think that if they do want to set it, they may pull back into this 220 area. That's why I have this line here. It's our previous resistance level that will now be support. If we do pull back here, potentially, there's no need to. We can just continue to grind higher, right? But if we do pull back, I think it's a very good opportunity for me personally to be adding to the Tesla position that I already have, writing some options as well for some premium for our next leg up our next leg up will definitely take us into the 300 to 315 level that is the one that i'm targeting on tesla bulls in full control of the monthly at this point we have reset the monthly trend to the upside very bullish it is now a gonna be a weekly confirmed uptrend most likely scenario and the daily bulls are obviously in absolute full control slightly overbought here well not slightly we're actually pretty overbought right on the uh, on the daily here so the four hour time frame is my guide you see how well we've been grinding this 12 ema if in my opinion the bulls lose this in a significant fashion and set a four hour downtrend that is when i'm going to be looking for further daily consolidation but until the bears can claim this 12 ema we may just grind higher just like apple microsoft and the rest of our tech stocks Tesla was kind of one that was left behind for a while and now is playing a bit of catch up. So congratulations if you were accumulating positions on Tesla throughout that time. Notable mention here, PayPal, you guys know I love covering the PayPal stock, right? What is PayPal doing? It's not doing a whole lot of anything, right? Everybody that I know that's looking at PayPal stock is, when is it going to finally have a nice 5% day, a nice 4, 5, 6% day like the rest of tech always has, right? Well, guys, Patience, right? Just patience, patience, patience. What are we trying to do? We are trying to set the daily higher low, right? So this candle, I believe Friday is the one to watch, right? You kind of don't want to lose uh, the low here, which is around, you know, 6240-ish, right? I need this to kind of, this would actually be really good level to base a daily higher low off of. So if we get some bullish news tomorrow and Wednesday, very possible that we're able to set the uptrend, if not, in my opinion, the daily bull flag potential continues, right? We're still hunting for that daily higher low. You won't know it's a daily higher low until we get to the higher end here um, of this, the, the top out zone, right? Which is about 65, 30-ish. So as long as we don't start trending back up here, it's going to be very tough to say what was the bottom of this move. So just keep that in mind, guys. Anything above you know, $59 right now, we're looking for the higher low compared to our previous low to set the daily uptrend. We still have not confirmed the daily uptrend, right? Need this daily uptrend to confirm in a nice pattern. That way we can say, okay, the weekly bounce is now well underway, right? We want to try to take as much as possible from these earnings back. I was hope I was hoping that PayPal would participate more off of the back of all of these bullish gains across the entire market at this point, right? But it's just not in favor right now. It reminds me a lot of Meta, right? When Meta was just being unfavorable down here, it reminds me of Netflix when nobody wanted to buy Netflix and the market was recovering and nothing else and, and these stocks were just doing absolutely nothing, right? So now it's kind of PayPal's turn to be just relegated here and nobody loves it. But I will remind you guys that analyst targets remain bullish to the upside. We're now at a price level of 2017. They're making twice the amount of revenue that they made back in 2017. And all analyst targets are considerably higher. Well, actually, one guy is down here at 58, but your average targets are 91. And the maximum targets are well into the $100 range. So there's a lot of meat on the bone, in my opinion. A lot good, good risk to reward um, on this stock for me personally. That's why I've been building a fairly uh, heavy position. So... That is most of our major names, guys. Keep an eye on the value plays, right? Disney looking to come back potentially, right? Decent, decent value in relation to as it is in the past. 
Fundamentally speaking, guys, this has been sort of struggling right as they try to ramp out their Disney Plus. Their parks are kind of maxed right now. They're pulling in a lot of good revenue, but their vertical segments, the segments that they can maximize at, at parks, the pricing power is kind of peaking, right? They've kind of monetized all aspects in their park. So now they're really relying on their streaming service to, uh, to, to kind of take over here. And obviously they have all of the movie franchises and whatnot that they're all that they're relying on right so very very good you know price level for disney but it's priced that way for a while because they haven't been growing to wall street expectations um but you know this is just another one of our laggard stocks um that's that's just kind of trailing behind here nike is another one right nike with a very very big dip if you guys know the channel i have been averaging into nike around these levels it finally looks like it kind of starts to make a round bottom here on the wheelie weekly wants to maybe do some mean reversion um you know obviously we're just looking for a lower high compared to this right because it is such an aggressive move down unfortunately um, for them to reverse the weekly it's unlikely that they v-shape it i'm kind of looking for something like this potentially right to reset the weekly uh trend but it does look like we're kind of finding a round bottom here right around the 105 to 103 level here which is filling our gap fill from uh from our previous earnings right so there are still a few names that are kind of lagging the market behind you know dollar general got absolutely destroyed last week um estee Lab also after earnings is completely destroyed and this is a legacy company you know you're getting 2020 prices at this point right so there are still some value plays um, with decent price levels let they've you know tech had all of the earnings recession last year tech had all or most of its earning recession last year in 2022 this year because of what they say that there might be a potential recession in the later in the second half of 2023 and early q1 2024 all of your value names, all of your retail and consumer facing names, you know, more of the value plays, they're the ones getting destroyed on earnings now because they're revising they're, they're all the revisions. They're tapering them back. They're kind of sandbagging expectations for the next three, four quarters out potentially because they're saying the consumer may be a bit more hesitant to spend its money in the midst of a recession. So that's why a lot of these retail names are pulling back and providing low guidance during their earnings calls, which is why they're getting crushed, right? In my opinion, a bit of an overreaction, because at this point now, if the, as long as they do better than their guidance, which is kind of the game that they play, right? They will be uh, compensated nicely to the upside. So it's kind of another case of, well, guide really, really low so they can beat. That's exactly what Big Tech did last year. They guided really, really low. And then in Q4 and Q1 of this year, you saw what happened. They just consistently beat and were rewarded healthy, healthily with it to the upside. So now it's just kind of values turn and the dividend stocks turn to take a little downfall, prep, get everything baked into the earnings expectations. They kind of price in the worst immediately so they, they can beat it down the line. So... Hope you guys enjoyed the video, guys. I try to, sorry, I talk too fast sometimes. I try to pack a lot of information into these videos, a lot more than some other guys that just say, well, so uh, resistance up here, price support down here, now on to the next stock, right? So I really try to explain what I can potentially see is happening, right? A top out or where we're going to retrace to. So I hope you guys appreciate that. If you do, consider liking the video, consider subscribing. I love you guys. I hope you had a good time trading. Um, don't, you know, don't build out too many positions here before we get to hear what's going to happen on, on tomorrow CPI and Wednesday with the Fed, right? So I'm kind of tapering back a little bit in anticipation of that. And we'll see what happens. Is it going to start weekly consolidation or are we just going to continue to grind high? and cement the fact that most likely the bottoms are in all right so take care guys and i'll see you tomorrow